Last time on Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Dinner Theater. Viva Caligula prayed to his god and made many promises in order to find a way to escape sex slavery, but only managed to have more sex. Alec Collin made friends in the magical town of Fossi and signed up to apprentice under a powerful wizard, Portal Flat, and learned several new spells from him. Aristophocles left the town of Vid with Jacques and Kid passed out of the local inn and wandered out into the desert searching for something to hunt and began tracking a pride of dire lions for several days. And now, Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Dinner Theater continues. Well, it's basically a hunter versus other hunters. Yep. They circle around me and now they're behind me? Yep. I'll get all my mischances again, right? You will assume in these four days you've slept at some point in time, so yeah, you've got all five of your dudes back. I'm just going to mist until they pass me by. All right. I can still perceive well in the mist, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you're rolling a perception check and, yeah. 17. You perceive good enough to know they've passed you and you feel like they're at a safe distance and now you're behind them again. It took all five of your minutes, though, for them to, like, lose, for you to lose them. So can I try and track them? You're behind them. You can try and track them again. 23. You're, you know, still at a safe distance, but you're back on their trail. You know where they're going. You're behind them. You see them. You got them in your sights. They don't notice you. What are they hunting? Rhinoceroses. You're shitting me. Nah. They've gone uh, towards the shore and found some rhinoceroses. That's what they're hunting. Coast, coastal rhinos? Yeah, coastal rhinos, man. This is a mystery, magical world full of strange beings. <laughs> Including coastal right. rhinos, dude. We got those. We got those. We call suspension of disbelief, man. <laughs> I want to track them till they find one of these coastal rhinos. Yeah, alright. You see them. You see them hunt and kill six rhinos. These two lions kill six rhinos. and They pounce upon them, hug them to death, bite them and claw them. These rhinos have no natural defenses against these lions. I mean, they have a horn, and so let's say uh, some of these lions may have taken a little damage. One of them's injured. They've killed all six of these rhinos now, are now feasting upon them and then like carrying whatever they can back to their cave. You see them now picking up the meat to carry whatever they didn't eat back home. They're, they're now approaching you, they're coming back towards you. You were behind them, following them, and now they're heading back home, so they're walking back towards you. So they're coming, they're now coming closer to you. Well, they are carrying rhinoceroses, so I'll say that makes them on par with you, because they're carrying meat. I'll say it slows them down. Okay, so I can stay just out of their, uh, discovery yeah. then, huh? Just barely, as long as you move at the same pace as they do and don't slow down, yeah. Yeah. We're gonna, we're, we'll go back to their cave. I'm gonna hide. Okay, you hide um, in the mountains. I'll roll me a survival check or a stealth or something. Roll me something that would work to hide in the mountains from these dudes when they pass you. Well, I'm gonna hide right outside. Well, not right outside, but near their uh, their their cave. All right, you and hide somewhere near their caves. Observe, where I can observe if two of them leave again. All right, so roll me a stealth check to hide there. Twenty-one. Six. Uh, dire lions come out from the cave. Uh, the six seem to be greeting the two that are coming towards them. and But it seems like maybe some of them might have caught your scent as well. They seem to be like looking around and maybe even looking your direction. I noticed this, right? You might be downwind from their cave. Roll me a perception check to see. Roll me a perception check to see if you notice it. Fourteen. Sort of. You sort of notice it. <laughs> All right. I don't know how else to put that with a fourteen. You don't really notice it, but you, you know. Out of the corner of your eye, maybe? Because I mean, you were watching these two come. Yeah, alert, around, yeah. yeah. You know? I mean, you see them. You might see them come out. You might. I don't know if you would know if they were looking at you or not. You might think. You might think in your mind, are they looking at me? Are they not looking at me? Like they seem I'd to be looking. I'm probably going to err on the side of caution. All right. So you err on the side of caution. What do you do? I try and back away to a safer distance. All right. So is that another stealth check to try and sneak away? I guess. Can it be a survival? Uh, only if you can explain to me why. One, I wouldn't. I, I would not imitate the coastal rhinos because because they'll get eaten. Their strategy is not effective. No, don't do this. What, no. what, <laughs> what comes to mind is that there. I mean, there are lots of critters out in the desert that have adapted certain survival techniques to uh, being able to escape in the sand. I'm thinking specifically of desert vipers okay. that uh, are very capable of blending into a tan brownish background they're close to the ground they do this wiggling thing where they can you know you know insinuate their bodies into the sand and uh they keep a low profile over right. the landscape so, so we're gonna say you out. already have knowledge that's your you have enough knowledge nature to know 
That's a good technique to mimic. Yeah. So you're gonna, so you're gonna like wiggle in the sand, get some. You're gonna like get low, low to the ground. Yeah. And you're gonna cover yourself in sand. That it's for that for that I will let you roll survival. Okay, awesome. Twenty six. Successful. You, they oh, don't seem to notice you. They come outside and then they <laughs> seem consumed with uh, eating this rhinoceros meat. At least half of them, like two of them, have already been eaten, so they're not as hungry. Um, there are six left, but at least three or four of them at this point in time seem to be like sharing a meal and swapping. So like there's three or four of them eating at a time, and then the other two or three or, or four are milling about in the area or in the caves. Um, but they're in the, the rest are in the front of the caves eating, like in the, right in the entrance. They don't seem to bring the food deep inside the cave. They eat it like right at the, the entrance of their cave to leave the bones. Because there already seem to be lots of bone remains in the front of the cave as like a warning almost. Like this, this is where we eat. We'll come past these bones. <laughs> Yeah. Where? Yeah, yeah, there's bones here because stuff gets eaten here. Uh, so yeah, the entrance. There's lots of they eat right at the entrance. And there are at least three or four of them there at a time, and the rest are either outside or inside, or you know, their various places like before. Um, so what does this tell me about these cave lions? Two of them go hunting at a time and bring back food for the rest of them. So is it always the same two, or do does that roll rotate? Uh, you you would have noticed already with the roll you had before that they rotate. They seem to trade the responsibility of going out hunting and bringing back food. Um, like I said, sometimes all six of them are there. It just varies from, from day to day. Like sometimes they don't. Like if, like after this rhinoceros feast, they might not need to go out for a day or two. And then it seems like they'll send a pair out to hunt and to bring back what they need. And then the rest will feast on the rewards. And then the next day, or whenever they get hungry again, they'll be like, now that we're hungry again, it's time for the next two to go out. They do seem to go, always go out in pairs. And they do seem to be male-female pairs and hunt together. Huh. Okay. So when do the next two go out? Whenever they get hungry again. Do you want to wait and see? Yeah. Like, about two days later, if you uh, yeah. do another, like, just, you're just hiding in the sand and watching them. If, I'll let you take a 20 on at this point. You take Far a 20. enough to get some rest, though. Yeah, yeah, you can sleep in the sand at night, too. I mean, do you, I mean, you don't have a tent or anything, but if you want to sleep in the sand, you can. Other than the fact yeah. that it's, like, sandstorm at night, you might get buried in sand. It's kind of a harsh environment. You are, oh, you're a druid, so, I mean, the environment, even when it's harsh, is like, that's wonderful, it's nature, you know, for you, that's beautiful. <laughs> the desert's a beautiful place, this is a wonderful environment, yeah. this is God's creation, you know, you could probably take a, yeah. take a positive spin on it, and like, no, I love the sand, is great, look at all the sand all around me, There's, I've never been anywhere yeah. in the world with so much sand. Uh, yeah. You appreciate it. So you, like, love the sandstorms. <laughs> you're, a weather, you're a weather guy, too, so sand, the sandstorms are really no challenge to you. So even, like, even when the tornadoes come towards you... i about that. You're, yeah, there's a lot of... You probably see lots of, just, like, tornadoes, sandstorms, and stuff, but you're probably fascinated by it. You're probably, like, a storm chaser type. Like, to you, as a weather druid, that's your, like, specialty, right? That's yes. your thing, yeah. That's my domain. Yeah, that's your domain. So you would probably be just very interested in the tornadoes and stuff. They would probably wouldn't even frighten you. You would love, like, trying to... You would, like, hunkering down in the middle of them and, like, then being in the middle of them, and you would probably appreciate the whole thing and probably... You'd probably survive it all just fine and probably learn from it. So I'll say at this point in time, you might even learn something from the sandstorms, like, as far as your weather domain. That's where I want to go with this. So, while I'm resting, I, of course, I pray on a regular basis, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. You've been in the, you've been uh, hunting for days, and you already talked to goes about that's why you went out here. So maybe every night after you... Like, have watched what you've watched, you pray to goes about what you've learned today. Today yeah. I watch the lions do this, and they, like you gain whatever information you need from that every day. Can I, can I pray during some of these storms? Well, I can already do a storm burst, uh -huh. but I'm in the desert, and there are different kinds of storms here in the desert. Mm -hmm. Can I ask Gozra to point me in the direction for learning how to cast a storm that cast a kind of storm you would find in a desert, say a sandstorm or a thunderstorm or dry lightning that you see in the desert, or, you know, high winds, you know, All right. or something, or... Gozra, uh, Gozra will reason. say, yeah, Gozra will say, to control the weather in, the, in this environment, you need only to find the great crystal. I wouldn't know where this crystal would be, would I? I've never encountered it before. Go, I don't think you have. I, you, mean, you know, I think you were looking for it. No one took you there yet. But Gozer will let you know that Jacques knows. Jacques has touched it. Jacques knows where it's at. Juan knows where it's at. So, I mean, he'll even list people that you know that knows where it's at. Cersei knows where it's at. All your friends <laughs> know where the shit's at. So now I have two goals in mind. One, I need to sit down with Jacques and talk about a crystal. And two, I gotta finish this hunt. That I'm currently on. Okay, so when do two more lions go out to hunt again? Two days later. Okay, can I wait till that two, day later, two days later? I want to do the same thing. I want to, I want to trail them. 
track them. Excuse me. Yeah, roll me a survival. Forty-six again. You track them real good. You follow these same two. <laughs> you follow two different I track lines. The fuck out of them. Yeah, you track the fuck out of those lines. <laughs> you uh, you follow them on another hunt, and they go out hunting for food for the the group again. Are they going after coastal rhinos? No, these two seem to go after a different kind of meat. They each seem to like their own kind of hunting style. So the last two yeah. went towards the coast, towards the coastal rhinos, which exists here. So these lions seem to be like digging down in the dirt and pulling out some beasts. Okay. Dust diggers, up. huh? Yeah. Are these like, like worms or moles or hedgehogs? Yeah. You want a little knowledge of nature to find out? You just see them digging in the dirt and pulling up some kind of animal. But you can roll either perception or knowledge of nature. Knowledge of nature. Alright. It's me. Ah, shit. Oh. Seven, eight. Can I ask you this, Brian? This roll of perception check. Is 14. It's like a giant starfish like creature coming from the sand with five long arms surrounding like a toothy maw. There's like a big How mouth big in the middle. Uh, it's large. It's bigger than medium, so, you know, one size larger is it than you big are. Is the dire lion? The same dire, size, dire, same dire size dire. as them. Yep, equal in size. Whereas the rhinoceros were smaller, and they were attacking yeah. like six of them. These two lions um, uh, seem to be caught in a field of nine of these things, and you can't tell if they planned this attack or not. They're just being. They're, right now, you are witnessing the battle between them and nine dust diggers. They seem to. Are walk. they winning? Currently, yes. Currently, they're succeeding in, in fighting the dust diggers. They haven't wandered to the middle of the territory. They're on the edge of the dust digger territory. And fighting two of the weaker dust diggers on the edge. Before we go forward, Brian, can I ask you this? Uh huh. So I'm on this. This is not just any particular run in the mill hunt. I am. This is sort of like a little quest I picked up, trying to figure this out. I'm trying to learn anything, everything I can to be a better hunter. You followed them for <laughs> weeks at a time. You've got their <laughs> daily schedule down. You know when they take yeah. a shit, man. Like yeah. literally, you know everything these guys do at this point. I, want, I also want to know about their prey. Okay. Like, do I learn anything that would... So I tracked them while they were hunting coastal ri rhinos, right? Uh-huh. You say I might have learned anything about... Suppose I wanted to hunt coastal rhinos myself. Yeah. Would I have seen anything? I would that say the help? next time you hunted uh, rhinos in this region... Oh, uh, totally, dude. I'm going to use that. So these dust diggers that these cave lions are fighting... Um, if they're surrounded by nine of them, like, are they... Well, there are nine of them seem to, like, be clustered together, and they're fighting two on the outer edge. So they didn't, like... Had they just, like, walked in the desert unknowingly, you probably would yeah. have gotten... You would have stumbled into a whole field of them, and they would walk at the same time. These, uh, lions seem to know how to draw them out. So they, like, went to the edge of where this territory was and, like, pawed at it and drew them to the surface. And then fought yeah. two on the edge, like, two weaker ones before, like, they didn't go into the... They didn't just, like, wander aimlessly into the desert like an idiot. So you might know now to avoid these in the desert, and you might know how to draw them out, and, you know, to fight the weaker ones on the edge versus the ones in the center. Okay. So the ones um, on the edge seem to be younger and not quite as large. They're closer so, to medium size. What are the other dust star diggers doing while the lions are fighting the two on the edge? I mean, you hear them shrieking, you, hear them, you see them, like, trying to reach, but they're, like, kind of confined to a certain space in the sand. So you would assume uh, that these smaller ones the lions are killing are their young? Uh huh. And they're like, they're shrieking in like, if you, as a druid, I mean, I'm gonna assume you have Sylvan as a language, right? I do. Yeah, you, yeah. Under, you understand the dust diggers are crying out in pain and horror as these lions are killing their children. These lions are killing okay. these baby dust diggers, <laughs> eating them and then taking parts of them home with them. And these parent dust diggers can't reach, can't do anything about it, they're like, I want to eat you, lion, but I can't reach you. Like, if you came to the... Come here, I would eat you. If you came any closer, I would kill you. But the lions are smart and, you know, they've... They also have survival techniques, and they've learned through their living in the, in the desert. That's the thing these two lions have learned how to hunt, are these dust diggers, and so they know how to stay out of their territory. And it's like the other ones knew how to hunt coastal rhinos, which are very rare. They knew where to find them. I can't just let this play out. No. I'm going to draw my bow. So, uh, two of them came out, and one of them has sort of been bloodied by one of the, the little ones. Like, has been bit, but is not dead. So, you have one fully powered dire lion and one sort of injured dire lion. Here, yeah, they're still trying to eat. They don't notice you yet. They're still trying to fight these nine dust diggers. I'm gonna draw my bow. My huntsman composite bow. I like it. I have ten sleep arrows. 
Uh, Lunch Man Composite Bow has the advantage of once I shoot someone with it, Luke Hayden capture feature, I guess. If I get yeah, you can track them later? Bow. Yeah, yeah. It gives you a bonus for survival. So whenever you track these guys later, it'll be even easier because you've shot them before. Right. And it says bonus add one to damage. Yeah, once you and you've already been tracking them. That's right. So you get a you get a hurt of me because you've already been tracking them for days. You're a brilliant player. Whoa, this all came together just now. It says plus one d six damage to any animal I've tracked. Well played. Okay. Um. So I'm gonna shoot these them both with sleep arrows. That's a ten total. All right. You just lost a sleep arrow. I'm gonna let you roll a stealth though, because I'm a nice DM to uh, have them not notice you doing it. And if your stealth is successful to beat my perception, they won't notice you shooting an arrow at them. Thirteen. I rolled an eighteen plus eleven, so twenty-nine. So oh. I'm gonna wait. Oh yeah, they both turn around and look your direction. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna notch another arrow. All right. Another sleep arrow. Sixteen. That's a hit. So you, he does take. They do take the arrow damage, plus the one d six because you track them, but it won't fall asleep. Seven. But it will take seven damage. How far? I forgot to ask. How far away am I from these? You're probably about 190 to 100 feet, and you can shoot that far with that arrow, so you're good. Right. Um, but about that far. And both of them do start coming towards you, though. They move about 40 feet per turn unless they're running. So they move about 80 feet, we'll say. So now they're about. 10 feet from you. They've both come your direction instead. I'm gonna shoot another sleep barrel at the one I just fired at. Alright. Roll the attack. 13, 15. I get a reflex save. Roll an 8 plus 8, so 16. So I'm gonna take half. 9. Natural, 20. No! Are you serious? Yeah. And then an 18. Uh-huh. Alright, so two hits. Are they close to me though? I thought they were still a ways away. Well, they, they were, but then they got within 10 feet of you. We were on that last one, so now they have another chance to move and then attack. So now they're on top of you. Um, so they both get you, and one's a 20. So 30. You do take 30 damage. And they're both grabbing at you if they beat your uh, CMD. I rolled a 27 and a 30. Oh, yeah, 30. Oh, gosh. That puts me at negative 4 health. All right. So, yeah. They fucking pounce but on you, dude. Can I take this opportunity to use a hero point? Yeah. Side. So desperately need it. You can. Well, thank you. Before they first uh, noticed I was there. Yeah. I'm gonna go back in time to before they saw me. Okay. So that undoes all that damage, right? It's a big. Re- <laughs> that's a big rewind, but I'll allow it. I mean, it's a hero point. I guess if, if I don't get any get to do anything else with that hero point. Yeah. Like sometimes you play down your mind or like wait, pull back. If I do that, this will happen. So I don't do that. Instead of actually doing it, you imagine doing it just like the game. Power of forethought. Yeah, yeah. Right? So yeah, you undo that. You don't attack them yet. You're just still watching. I got ballsy and almost got burned for it. I'm just going to observe how they uh, conduct themselves with this prey. All right. Um, to see if I can learn anything else. All right. You see them uh, murder two of these young dust diggers and dig them out of the sand um, and drag them back to the cave after they eat what they want. So obviously the ones that hunt get first dibs on the thing that they kill. And then drag the rest of the cave, and then there's a bunch of dead starfish bodies inside the cave too. Okay. They're the young are about four feet by four, you know, four feet across. So they're not as big as the large ones. They're about four feet wide, the ones they drag home. So even the so the rhinos were kind of small compared to them. These things, that's why they probably eat so often because they're finding smaller prey in the area. And these dust diggers are obviously the creatures that rely on ambush, and the t- and the lions are aware of that and took advantage of that fact. So. Can I use that to avoid them in the future? The dust diggers? Oh hell yes. Right. Or to draw them out. I mean, either way, you can use it however oh. you want to use it. You would have the knowledge of them. You know they exist. You can use them however you want. So let me ask you this, Brian. Would it uh, does it work the same as if you're an assassin, if you're a hunter, where you can go on a hunting expedition and kill beasts or animals or even the most difficult play, prey, a humanoid? Uh huh. Yeah. Do you still get like <laughs> like that movie <laughs> experience points? Yeah. Anytime you defeat an enemy, you get experience points. Kill or not kill. I, so, okay, I observed them hunting the dust diggers. Uh, you I see the same them? thing as I did before. So you missed out, let them pass you, and then sneak back behind yeah. them again? So yeah, you're, you're now right. following them again as they walk back to the caves. And then they go, they feast on the dust diggers and whatnot, and... They share their food. They family meal. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to be hidden away again, um, in a safe spot. Like a snake? I'm going to pray to Gozra again. Alright, what's your prayer? And 
Uh, this is just for, uh, not necessarily asking for aid, but just for uh, general inspiration that I would need from a god because I'm about to do some druid shit. What I want to do is I'm going to, in order to better know these cave lines, I'm going to mimic their hunt. So I've, I've observed how they hunt coastal rhinos. I'm going to try and follow their footsteps and hunt coastal rhinos now. I like it. I know where the coastal rhinos are. Yeah, on um, the coast. I, I saw how they were tracked. I want to start tracking rhinos. Roll me a survival check to track some rhinos. Yeah, I just rolled a natural one. Oh. There are no rhinos on the coast right now, then. You huh. aren't able to uh, locate uh, any rhinos with a natural one. I'm a pretty, pretty tenacious hunter. Sometimes, you know, they're out there, sometimes they're not. Yeah, yeah. You never eat unless you keep trying, right? Yeah, like maybe you went, like, you're by the water. Maybe they were coming there just to, like, drink salt water like idiots. You don't know. <laughs> There's, there's a desert, there's not, not a whole lot of options. Maybe they've learned to survive on salt water, and this is their oasis. Because maybe you came on the wrong day, but they're not here today. So, I want to be patient. Can I cast about again? Maybe, you know, go away, get some sleep, retrace my steps, and, you know. Just wait in that area. Start again. Yeah. Like the next day, you know. Yeah. I'll roll a percentage. Can I track some rhinos? Roll me a survival, and I'll roll a percentage chance to see if they come. So, I got an 18 on that. All right, that day you watch very diligently. You see a lot of like weather activity in the distance. Like you see some sandstorms, so it's kind of interesting for you because you're hanging out on the beach and you see distant sandstorms, but no rhinos. Um, these sandstorms attract me. You know, I'm gonna head towards that, and uh, I'm gonna put on my uh, my uh, learning cap and see if I can uh, study these sandstorms. Uh, what does it mean? Is it just a regular run in the middle sandstorm? Uh, is there anybody caught in a sandstorm? Perhaps. Let's roll a percentage chance. There's some rhinoceroses caught in the sandstorm, actually, being like spun around like cattle in that movie Twister. Oh, you gotta be shit. Oh, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there, well, there's only one. You see one and like a, some cactus and other shit like caught up in it, but there's definitely one rhinoceros like going in circles. And you're like watching yeah. this rhinoceros pass by over and over and over again. What are the odds of hitting him with an arrow? Fifty percent. So if you if you roll a percentage <laughs> chance and it's higher than fifty, I'll I'll let it hit. Well, you still have to roll past the rhinoceros' AC. But if you roll fifty yeah. percent, I'll say that you can actually do it and it might hit. With that below uh, that, I'll say it doesn't. It catches the wind and doesn't. Uh, can I use my natural knowledge of natural storms to uh, ascertain Ooh. how long the storm is gonna last? I like this. That's nature. Yeah, knowledge nature. Yeah, do that. That's storms. Twelve. Yeah. Still kind of a new environment for you, so it's hard to read the storms. It just seems to be spinning a lot right now. Well, it's moving, it's moving, uh, but it seems to be moving towards the center of the desert, and you're on the other side, so you're following it. It's not coming towards you. Alright, fuck it. I want to go to see if I can track down some more rhinos. I like it. This particular rhino is in the middle of a storm. It's, it's yeah, it's, like it's, it's been storm separated storm from its herd, it's going to be by itself, so nothing else, you get to fight just one rhino instead of a bunch of rhino. So you've, you've now caught a rhino by itself, once this storm stops. I can even let you take a 20 and, it, you know, let this storm stop, and it's like, catch this rhino where it lands. Uh, it lands about 80 feet away from you, uh, but I'll give you initiative. I'll give you initiative, you've been watching this whole time, so you can shoot at it now. Like, as soon as, it, as soon as the storm stops and it drops to the ground, it's stunned. I'm gonna give you a bonus, even, because it's stunned. You have three rounds where it does nothing. It's like recovering from falling from the storm. So you got three rounds to, like... Do whatever you want to those rhinos. Yeah, yeah, go for it. As you approach it, you're standing still, or are you moving towards it as you shoot? No, I'm just gonna stand still. All right, so you stay at the same I can distance. Hit it from this distance, right? You're at 80 feet, so whatever the range. I think your range of weapons is like 120 or something. So. Yeah. 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 So you're good. You can shoot from here. 17. That's gonna be a hit. Well, you're damn. Nice. You're damn damage. Five. Five damage. Five damage. Fifteen. Ooh, just barely a miss. Close, but no cigar. Alright, I'm gonna roll one more time. Cigars are elsewhere. Damn it! What's Nine. It? Miss. So two more misses, but you get one arrow in there before it recovers, and now it gets a chance. So now it recovers, I get an attack at you. I rolled a four, though. I rolled a, t a 12 versus your AC. My AC is 17. So it misses, it comes at you, tries to gore you with its horn, but misses you. You dodge out of the way. Alright, so it's close enough for me to use my quarter staff now. It's within 10 feet of you, yeah. So you can lunge at it and hit it. So this will be your move and your attack if you hit it. So 13. 13's a miss. Yeah, but you, right. you lunge at it and just barely runs away too fast, you miss it. 
It turns around and charges you again. So 26 versus your AC. So that does uh, fifth, or 16 damage. That leaves me at 10. 10 health points. So yeah, it gores you pretty good. It gets you with its tusk. Boom. Okay. You're gored. Yeah, that's... Uh, like, this thing, obviously, like, unlike the lions, this thing will not eat you, but it is going to defend itself. So you know even if it, like, knocks you unconscious, at least you won't get eaten afterwards. Right. But it's still a rhinoceros, even if it is coastal. <laughs> what do I want to do here? I can't take another hit like that. So... Can I ask Billy for some help? Yeah, Billy's with you. Yes, yeah, so what do you want? Uh... Like we've had this conversation before. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, as long as I put him in danger, and the rhinoceros is probably less dangerous than a dire lion, so maybe it'll convince him. Yeah. Might take a diplomacy role, but. Look, Billy, I'm in some trouble here. I just need you to, like, this isn't a lion, it's just a rhino. It's not even a carnivore. Rhinos are herbivores, right? Yeah, yeah, they are herbivores. They eat, like, rhinos are herbivores. Yeah, plant plants, branches, thorny shrubs. They eat, desert, they eat desert cacti in this environment, and, like, Seafaring algae and things like that, seaweed. I was like, can you can you buzz around his head for a little bit while I uh, pull out this potion to heal myself? So you want That's this? Uh, you want you want him to provide a distraction? Roll me a diplomacy check for uh, for him to provide a distraction. Uh, nineteen twenty. Yeah, that'd be good enough. Billy okay. will agree. He'll provide you this assistance. Let's see what this buys you. He'll buy you five rounds. Even you got five rounds to do whatever you need to do. He'll distract the rhino for five rounds. He's not afraid of a damn rhino. He says, oh, as, yeah. "He says as long as you feed me a fairy later, we got a deal. You got a fucking <laughs> Scooby Doo over here. If you give him a Scooby snack, he'll fucking do it." Yeah. Okay, I'll go get the fucking rhinoceros. <laughs> All right. He says That's in your work. brain. So I've got five rounds before he can attack me again. You got five rounds when he's distracted by Billy. Billy will not. Get, I'll, I'll roll percentage chance. But I don't think Billy's gonna get hit. He's pretty crafty. He was with your dad while he was an assassin, so. Right. Billy's gonna take some damage. Billy's gonna take two damage, but that's it. It's not a lot. Totally worth it. Yeah, yeah. So Billy does get hit a little bit, and certain. So we'll say that happened in the fifth round. So we'll say that's right okay. when Billy Billy gets hit, it gets and it comes right back. He's like, "Fuck that! That rhino got me. Nice. That was, you know, I did it. I did what I did what I could do. But during those five rounds, what do you, you drink a potion? What else do you do? You got four of the rounds after you drink the potion. What are, that's how many five rounds? rounds total, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you can do that, you have so three can rounds I left. Two rounds drinking. Yeah, yeah. So you chug a potion. You chug another <laughs> potion. You still. Have, Three rounds, which is 18 seconds. Let's do whatever you want. All right, that's more than enough to recover my uh, all my health points. Can I use a round to move to the very edge of my range for hitting this rhino? Like 120? Yeah, you worst. can move during this time. I mean, you have three rounds, and you can move either your normal speed or you can run to double it or triple it if you need to. But, I mean, and tell me how you want to move, and that'll be how many rounds you have to do. I mean, depending on how far you want to get away. Just the very edge of my, uh, where I can reach him with a bow. Oh, so I like spend a, the next two rounds. I think, I don't know what kind of bow you have. So many, I think it's 120 feet, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah? I believe that. The Huntsman bow is yeah. 120? So, yeah. Yeah. So, you go to 120 feet, which you can move how far? 30 around? So, yeah. if we triple that, that's 90, which is if you run. So, you use two rounds, then you use one round to run 90 feet. You use one round to move your normal speed 30 feet, which equals 120. So that's it. At round four, you're in position. At 120, you're the farthest distance you can be for your range weapon without taking a penalty. I haven't been doing much of this lately. Let's do a, uh, I'm going to throw a spell at him. Ooh. Druid using a spell? Yep. It's like they were designed for that. I'm going to throw and... a, th a flaming spear at him. I like it. So I just need you to roll, roll, I need you roll... Fire. I just need you to roll a dex attack to throw it, because you are throwing a ball, so it is still a ranged attack. But it's versus touch AC, which is lower, so it's easier to hit. Uh, 14. Yeah, 14. That's still a hit. It's touch AC is 11, so you do your fire damage when you throw this fireball at it. 11. 12. 12 damage. Nice. And, if you concentrate, you can just do it again the next round just by moving it. So roll me a concentration check, which is a d20 plus wisdom. This is the fifth round right now, so you still get one round of yeah. this. Yeah. Damn it. Seven. Alright, so you lose concentration on the spell. So during this round, you can recast the spell and still, you still do the same thing, you just have to re-attack again. So you can recast it still. 
So you have to roll Don't another roll another another dex attack, BAB plus dex or whatever to throw it. Damn it. I rolled a natural one. You're gonna burn yourself. So roll ah. the roll the damage on yourself. Damn it. Sorry man, natural ones. I can't I would love to help you out, but I can't stop natural <laughs> one. That's fate. Twenty one versus your AC. Alright, so this thing tries to gore you again. It's gonna do fourteen damage as the rhino gores you. Are you unconscious? That stuff to take me out. Alright, you're knocked unconscious by this rhino. Luckily, this uh, this rhino does not eat meat. So it's not gonna kill you, it's just gonna gore you and walk away. You do wake up in the desert, covered in sand, injured. Where are we at? Uh, Viva Caligula? Alright, I'll roll a knowledge nature. I'll roll a 25 on knowledge nature. Alright, and you do that. You you know enough, you've lived here for a while. You've been boning this queen, you know about bees. What do you know about, what do you know about bees, man? You know about, like, how whenever bee... Keepers want to get honey, they smoke bees out and shit. If you had some smoke, man, you can get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. I don't have any stuff in my pants. Roll me a perception check. Maybe your stuff's in the room. It might take just make a move and a swift to get your stuff. 24 on perception. Your stuff's in the room, man. If you want to use your move and your swift to grab, you can grab one item out of your bag with a swift. So the first item I'm going to grab out of my bag is flint and steel, yeah. All right, so you run over to your bag, you grab your flint and steel. You can roll me a survival step, uh, survival check in this turn as your actual standard to light a fire. What are you catching right. on fire, though? You got pants. Oh yeah, there's them. No, I'll they are blue cotton. Yeah. <laughs> you go pantsless and burn your pants. I want to burn the pants. You you light your pants on fire. You start a fire in the queen's chamber. Automatically alerting all the guard, but also send them into a panic and sort of like you feel like right now If you rolled a decent stealth check, you could sneak out of here, huh? With your honeycomb. You got it under your arm. You're carrying it I know you got your honeycomb. I saw you steal it as long as you roll me a good enough stealth check to not get noticed sneaking out of the smoky area I'm gonna allow it. God's on your side because you prayed today It's not a 20, but I'm still gonna allow it. I'm gonna roll perception because I have to be fair But I think it's probably gonna be fine. I rolled a 5. Even with their perception, it's not good enough. I'm gonna say you're able to sneak out of the hive back into the jungle. With the honeycomb under your arm, with the whole hive in a panic, you're out in the jungle. You created some chaos in the Thry community. You, you know, you didn't kill the queen, but you fucked her a couple times, and you snuck out with some honeycomb. So, yeah, yeah. You guys have some, you can have some Ill illegitimate children, but otherwise, you got a good life. You snuck out with a honeycomb, you got out of there. You escaped sex slavery. You've now escaped slavery twice, my friend. I have no pants. No pants. <laughs> You're okay. covered in honey. Yeah, Maroke. Covered in yeah, yeah. Or bee jizz. I have, none, I have none of my gears for the wooden steel. Alright, so you're gonna have to roll me a dex check to get your wooden steel. Whatever was in that bag and whatever was with it, your weapons. Also, you got all your gear. You might want. You might take a minute to like get redressed and whatever you have, except your pants. You might be pantsless. You might be like Donald Duck style. You might have a shirt and no pants for a while. I'm going to. I'm literally going to sprint away from Which direction, the, which cardinal direction do you sprint out of the Thry Hive? South. You sprint south. I want to go back to my roommate, the Bronze Lizard. And I want to thank him so much for letting me stay there on a cheap, on a cheap. Yeah, in the couch. You just sleep on a couch, but at least he was cool about it. And it wasn't a dick. Yeah. He made you smoothies and he like gave you tanning tips and stuff and like weightlifting yeah. goals. So you got, you got along on some level. Well, I want to see if I can train him, uh, teach him how to create water, so if he'll create, uh, teach me the open spell, so I can come back to Cove. Ooh, I like it. Roll me a diplomacy. And that is an 11. Alright, he says, nah, man, if you want to learn the <laughs> open spell, take wizard as a class, dog. Oh, wait, okay, well, I'll, 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 I'll try to sweeten it with another level 1 spell. <laughs> I'll, I'll smash Smash a chair in his room. He's got a chair, right? Yeah. For Smash sure. You guys live together. You'll break some furniture and be like, what the <laughs> fuck, man? That was my favorite chair. And you'll be like, no, man, okay. watch this. I'll cast Mending on it. I was like, whoa, you fixed my favorite chair. That's a pretty good trick. I never, I can't, man, I don't know how to fix things. It's nice to have a roommate that can fix things. Roll me another diplomacy uh, check to add that in the list of cells you'll teach him to learn how to open. 14. All right. Uh, he's kind of coming around with the idea. He's looking for a little more knowledge. He 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 proposes this. You and Juwan were obviously drawn 
to Fosi for a reason. Obviously, the two of you were brought here to try and battle the Kekatar and the Nanette, just like the rest of us. They want us to save the city. What makes you so special? You guys aren't even really wizards. Sure, you're spellcasters. Yeah, you're not really wizards. You're not. But you were still brought here for a reason. What makes you guys so special? I'm willing to help any cause. I'm here to help. Like, I want to help people. So and you say, you concern. argue that, like, what brought you here was the cause of good. Are you show them your blinding light tattoo, maybe, or... Like, you yeah, trying to, like, I'll just, like, do some diplomacy? Yeah, hey, roll me a diplomacy check with yeah. your blinding light guild tattoo. Okay, I'm gonna use a spell real quick. Yeah, do it. Uh, Eagle Splendor, so plus four. And so I got a 20 with the plus six. Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna allow it. Still, but also oh. I want to meet the Panic Charge with Juwan, whatever. Yeah, yeah. so we'll, we'll leave it there so you guys can meet uh, the great wizard, the guy in the dome next time. Uh, the, the, you know, something. We'll try to hook that up, but he'll, he'll say he'll, he'll see what he can do. But we'll say if you, if you can give him some knowledge, you gave him that. You showed him your tattoo. He is now interested in the Blinding Light Guild. So maybe you're selling the, the bronze oh. wizard on becoming a member. And he'll but try and work in an introduction to... You know, if you can talk to some people, see what happens, see if you guys can meet the big guy. Yeah. Does he teach me the open spell? Do I get that? He does, but only once a week. Cool. I'll take him. It obviously still takes a key. Can we do something really obnoxious, like make you say open sesame or something stupid? Yeah. All right, uh, open yeah, sesame yeah, yeah, is the code word. Once a week. You only do it once every seven days. I'm going to say sesame, like the seed. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Sesame. <laughs> nice. If you say sesame, it's not going to work, because that's a seed. That'll let you open buns. If you want to open a, 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 if you want to open a sandwich, I'll say if you say open sesame, you can open any sandwich you want. Any sandwich. Even if it's not on a sesame, a sourdough, I don't care. Any sandwich is with that. Once a week, though. If you use it, then you can't usually open a door. But I can't wait till the sandwich rule comes into play. All right, Vortiga, caught in a groundhog day type scenario outside the city of Hugenston after what seems like an infinite amount of time of repeating the same series of events over and over and over again. One day in front of the city of Hugenston, a fire appears in front of you out of thin air, and in, when the fire subsides, you see an imp holding a note with his arm outstretched, handing this note to you. It's a rolled up scroll. I'm going to do a perception check to see if that imp is Neville Chamberlain. I did not give a good perception check. That is going to be a two. Looks like the same type of imp, uh, but looks slightly different, but you don't really know. I mean, you know, all imps kind of look the same. If you're like, no. hey, Neville, what's up? And it's not Neville, and he's super pissed off at you. <laughs> no, I'll go for it. Hey, Neville, how's it going? My name is not Neville. My name is Devil. Ah. Are you related to Neville? Probably. <laughs> okay. I'll take the uh, note from Devil. Alright, Devil vanishes back into a puff of flame. Um, the note you're holding, the bottom edge is also now on fire. So I need you to roll a perception check to read it in time before the note all burns up. I got a 18. Well, that's good enough. As the note burns in your hands, into ashes, you are able to read the following. Vortiga, stop wasting time, period. The HBI needs you urgently, period. Please report back to home base. Signed, Jagger Dyson. So no time will pass until I complete my objective, right? Technically, no, but you did get delivered this note on one of these days. Unlike, unlike every other of the days you have experienced... This one particular day, you got a note, and it does say, "Stop wasting time." I don't think I'm wasting time. Uh, every day, I create a massive destruction. It just turns to nothing. The right. next day. This never happened. Yeah. I don't want to drop what I'm doing because I, I guess I'll try and return to Jagger Dyson. Then where is this Hugenstead? I'm in Linya, right? You're on East Linya in Southeast Linya. Well, knowledge okay. geography I or. The mountains. I mean, you, you came here from the HBI, so you can roll yeah. a survival check to make it safely back. Sure, I'll do that. I'll ride uh, the mountains so I don't have to deal with fucking watchtowers again. Oh, that's <laughs> going to be awful. So, yeah, I got a 2. Alright, I got a 72. So let's find out what you run into on your way back home. 
Right, as you are crossing the mountains of East Linya, you encounter about 80... Oh my god. Uh, 80... Feral, savage cave dwellers in your path. They're like, but you can't go any further without crossing this, which seems like a huge try of scaly, dull gray humanoids. Kind of look like cave lizards with long tails and crests on their head and back. You're traveling through the mountains at night, and you seem to have interrupted some sort of if you, some sort of festival. I should search that. I forgot to speak a Perception check. Is there like, what's going on at this festival? Yeah. See like, you know, are they sacrificing shit, or are they just dancing in revelry? Oh, I have an eight. Yeah, other than the fact they seem to be reveling, they seem to be reveling in some manner. You stumbled across a party. You're like on the outskirts of the party. There's definitely some sort of crazy five foot. They're like five foot tall, 150 pounds lizard people, and they're definitely partying in this uh, valley that you're trying to pass through. So at this point, it's either pass through this fucking party or go up a mountain and try to avoid them. Well, I have uh, as Ortega, I'm a Highlander. I was born in the mountains, so I feel like I should make that travel. <laughs> so you're gonna try and go around the party? I mean, unless I can use my anti-hero point to ruin the party and scare them away, but I don't think I can. No, not to just like ruin the party. You can use it towards something in particular if you have an idea. If you have something anti-heroic to do. I'll let you be creative with hero and anti-hero points sometimes. You can give me something specific, maybe. But not just a broad ruin the party. No, I know, I know. Nah, I'm, I'm good, I'll just go now. Alright, so you try to avoid these cave lizards, who seem to be sticking pretty close to their caves, that seem to open out into this valley. You decide to go up the mountains and avoid these cave lizards. Yes. Let's see if that works out for you. I rolled a natural one, so luckily for you, they're busy partying and they don't notice you sneaking by, as long as you roll another really good survival check. Creep, creep. Can it be stealth? Well, to either one, yeah, stealth's fine. Oh, that can actually be fine. And I got an 18. You're able to sneak by him just fine. So you sneak past uh, these cave lizard folk through East Linia, past what you see on your north side, the Great Wall that exists and then doesn't exist. You've crossed over into West Linia. Roll me a survival check to leave the mountains of West Linia. I got five. I'm not going to search that. All right, you uh, encounter a group of hobgoblins on this side of the mountain. I'm sure you're familiar with. You've dealt with them in battle before. Yeah. Yeah. A rival tribe of hobgoblin, very burly and muscled, short but with long, thick arms and thick torso, short legs, almost ape-like. And yeah, we're in the mountain. Yep, and they're like a dark green hobgoblin. Um, you were climbing up the mountain, and you seem to have, uh, like, when you peeked over the edge of a plateau, you see uh, these hobgoblins on top of this plateau, and they seem to be like sniffing out something, like hunting. Only because okay. of your good survival, I'm allowing you to see them before they see you. Can I uh, do a knowledge nature to see what they could be hunting for up here? Yeah. I got a 14. You can't quite tell uh, what they're hunting for, um, but they're definitely hunting for something, something large. There seems to be a decent number of them, and they seem to have some ogres and trolls in tow with them. At least six hobgoblins, five leopards. Uh, one ogre and two trolls. Can I summon monster a horse? Like, can I use an anti-hero point to make the horse wounded and wailing? I like that use of anti-hero point. So you summon a horse, but you summon an injured horse. Yeah, I kind of put it in the group, in the middle, so I, you know, around the group, so that the. All right. So an injured horse wanders up to this group of hobgoblins, their leopards and trolls and such sort of like wanders from coming the direction away from you towards them, out of the woods. Yeah. I'll see if that distracts them. Or could it draw attention to the monster? Uh, it does It does draw some attention, maybe not of the whole group, but especially the leopards. The leopards see a weak prey. Um, so you, you have distracted the five leopards that were hunting with these hobgoblins. You seem to have ma lunged upon this horse and are now devouring it. And the trolls and hobgoblins are, you know, chanting, cheering these leopards on, devouring this horse. I'm going to try to sneak around the edge, around them, uh, if I can, go around them while they're distracted by the show going on. 
All right, roll me a stealth. I got a 14, but I'm going to surge it. I also got a 14, so surging it would be necessary. I got a 19 on my first surge. All right, that's good enough to make you stealthier than their perceptions. Like I said, I got a 14. Um, so I will say that with that distraction, you're able to sneak past these hobgoblins hunting for something. You continue on. Roll me another survival check to come down out of the mountains. Coming down the mountain. I got a 17. Alright, that's good. But is it good enough? That's good enough. <laughs> Roll me one more in the hills. I got a natural one. Hey! Alright, so as you're coming out of the hills, roll for initiative. Lucky for you, I got a 12. 25. Alright, so you have initiative, which means you spotted this thing before it spotted you, so roll me a perception check. Fucking two. So maybe you don't see as much as I thought you did. So we'll see this is probably at nighttime also, so something probably lunges out from a crevasse and lunges at you, but you get a you get initiative. You caught it just in time, so roll your attack versus whatever this thing is. It's, uh, a, not a, it's, not, it's not large. Whatever is leaped upon you is not big. You'll know that it's something smaller than you. But very aggressive because it attacks you. Something smaller than you just attacked you. And there's only one of them, and it's not as big as you are, but it definitely just leapt out at you. Well, I'll swing my uh, great axe and rope go at it. All right. So as it leaps out of wherever it leapt out of from the shadows, you swing your great axe in response. So roll me an attack. Now, my special ability. Ooh. Of my strength surge. I have as a cleric I'm aligned in the strength domain, so. Uh, I get a strength surge as a standard action. You can touch a creature, creature and group, give it great strength. For one round, the target gains an enhancement bonus to uh, equal to half their cleric level, minimum plus one. So you're Melee doing it to yourself? Combat checks that rely on strength, strength based skills, and strength checks. Yeah, I'm going to touch myself. All right, you touch yourself. That's a standard, so you still have a swift left and maybe a move. Uh, well, then never mind. I'm I didn't know that was the standard. I will not do that. You just—you told me it was. That's the only reason I know. I'm not gonna do that, man. All right, you change your mind. Uh. Mid battle. Mid battle. I'll allow it. I'm a nice guy. You already said that he was swinging, and then you're yeah. swinging and trying to touch himself. And I was, oh wait, that's not gonna work. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'll just. I mean, you're swinging either way, I assume. Yeah, I don't have really swift action at this point to do anything with. I mean, since it's already initiated an attack, like, I don't have anything I can prep myself with. So, uh, so yeah, I'll just swing at it. Alright, you swing at it and try to beat its uh, AC? Yeah. I got a natural one. Ooh. Swing and a miss. This thing lunges at you, you swing your axe, and you miss. So it comes right at your face, dude. It's a Pringles can, dude. Um, I rolled an 18 plus an 8, which is going to be, I believe, a 26. 26. Is that still a hit? Still up. Still right. up. Well, here we go then. This thing bites at your face, specifically. So you better get some bite marks on your face. You're going to take 11, da 11 face damage, and I need to know your CMD. Now, CMD is 21. I rolled a 37. So this thing grabs your face. It's about the size of your face. It's like wrapped around your head just now. So you're now being grappled by some eight-legged beast. Okay. Some furry eight-legged beast. Has just now like uh, jumped out at you, bit your face, and grabbed your head. I guess I'm just gonna do a uh, negative energy channel, negative energy. Smart. And just grab it, fucking zap it. You're gonna touch it with your negative energy hand and use a spell, but you're gonna mumble yeah. with your face covered by this thing. And you do have a will save to half the damage. I got a 12 so plus 12, so 24. Okay. So we'll roll this 2d6, and you get half the damage. And I got four! Two Is there damage. Is there I can search that? Yeah, you can search damage. You can add a d6. You have five a day. You can add a d6 to anything you want, including damage. I'm just going to take this as a loss and go for two. Yeah, I mean, I think it's jumped at your face, and you kind of swatted at it. So it makes sense that you didn't do a good, really good hit at first. Kind of panicked as it bit your face. Yeah, so I got uh, two damage on the animal. Are you carrying, how much gold are you carrying? Oh, god damn it. Um, <laughs> 1,459 gold pieces. Where are you keeping that? I don't know, her bag? 
your bag. Man, right you must now? be traveling very slowly because that's a heavy amount of gold. Matter of fact, this creature that was lunging towards your face now reaches into your bag and is going to eat 44% of your gold before you can do anything about it. As this yeah. thing just starts devouring the gold in your bag. I dealt with this creature before. It's hungry for your gold, dude. I don't know. I'm glad I have a wallet. Yeah, that yeah, helps. I never got any of that. You were dragging around this big bag of change and it attracted this thing. Well, I'm going to stab upwards with my master work short sword. Swing it. Yes! Natural 19, which is a critical times two. So you smack at this thing as it crawls inside your bag and starts chewing at your gold? Yeah, then that's going to be 13 damage. 13 damage. Now I'm going to surge it. I surge twice. My first surge gave 6 and my second surge gave 3, so 9 addition to the 13, so 22 total. Alright, so you smash at this thing that's trying, it's in your bag eating something. You hear it gnawing away at something in your bag as it's crawled down your back into your sack. Here's what we'll do. The only things that seem worth it to me are the gold or the holy symbol. If I roll below 50, it'll be the holy symbol. If I roll above 50, he's gonna eat more gold. I rolled below 50, so is this gonna eat your holy symbols? Your holy symbol is now gone. You can no longer cast clerical spells until you attain another holy symbol. For like 12 well, seconds now, this has been eating everything in your bag and get its hands on. You swung it at one time, you were swinging it again. You're pretty much swinging at your bag, so you're also gonna probably fuck up your bag when you're doing this. To be known. Well, I'm using Have my holes in your bag. I'm using my short sword to stab the animal versus the axe. My axe. Cool. Yeah. You're still putting small holes in your bag with a sword, though, as you stab into the bag to poke this thing. Flip my bag upside down and dump everything on the ground. All right. So roll me uh, plus C and B to grab the bag while this thing's inside of it moving around. <laughs> That's not even going to be worth it. I'm not even going to do that because I see it be so hard. There's no way that can happen. So I'll just stab it again. All right, you Why stab not? it with your sword again. I can't cast AC. Spells. Now that's your holy symbol. I only got a 14 on my attack. All right, so that's a swing and a miss, this thing rolling around in your bag. You probably stab your bag, but not the thing. That's definitely enough to hit a bag. I rolled a 17 plus, plus 18. Jesus, yes, that's a hit. But I'm gonna roll percentage chance. If I roll above 50, he's gonna eat gold. If I roll below 50, if I roll below 50, I'm gonna do this hit. I rolled a 94. So that was eat gold. So you lose 84% of whatever gold you have left. You hear it munching away at something. I heard you coming a mile away with that big ass bag of gold. Or out of curiosity, how poor are you now after those two uh, two huge hunks of gold being by this thing? Yeah, I'm at 102 dollars. 102 gold. Wow. Yeah, straight up. Well, there's nothing in my bag really worth anything at this point. I'm going to stab it again. It's just Roll eating it. away an empty bag. At this point. I'm going to stab it again. So I got another. I got another miss. All right, uh, above 50 is gold. Below 50 is biting you. I eat 84% of your remaining gold, which should, you bring, should bring you down to a negligible amount. 20 gold. My 16 gold left, and I'm going to now stab at it again. Uh, that is going to be a 15. It's a miss. Above 50 is stuff in your bag, below 50 will be you. I got a 60, so this time it's going to eat your pots and pans. Yeah, that's a miss. Alright, same deal. I got a 98. So, what we say, flint and steel? It eats your steel. Sure. So you still have flint, but no steel. Okay, I got a 23. I get a reflex save. 12, so 17, so I'll take half. That is going to be 10, so 5 damage. 5 damage. Yep. Take him. Yeah, 30 damage. Well, do you have anything metal left in your bag? I don't think so. 16 gold. Are you wearing armor? Well, my armor's not metal. So not, there's no more metal left to eat? No. Alright, he's gonna leave your 16 gold. It's either gonna stay and fight or flee after eat your gold. Let's say above 50 is stay and fight, below 50 is flee. Right. Rolled a 65, so it's still going to try attack. Alright. So it comes out of the bag, hungry for more, but I rolled a 6 plus... Well, 18, so it's still a, what, a 24? 
Does nine damage. I need to know your CMD. Your roll's gonna be higher. It's twenty-one. I know you're gonna get a thirty-eight. Yeah, I got a thirty-nine. <laughs> you're pretty close. Oh yeah. So this thing lunges back out of the bag, back onto your face. It wraps its eight furry legs around your head again after it eats all the crap in your bag. Well, I'm gonna stab upward at it on my face with my master work short sword. That's gonna be a eight. That's a miss. Uh, I rolled an 8, but plus uh, 18, and I get to roll twice. And that's, because uh, now it's uh, attached to you, and it's like raking your face as it grabs your head. So I get two attacks for to rake you. 9 plus 9, so 18 damage as it scratches up your face. You've got a bunch of scratches on your face. Alright, I'm two points away from going unconscious and dying. Oh my god. I got a miss. I don't have any spells or anything. Okay, here's, I'm going to give you a swift and a move to dump out the rest of your gold and flee. Man, I don't have any heal kit or anything. i be running away with 2, two HP. It's better and than what zero. Does the character really do that? From the character point of view, I don't know if Mortique would do that. I know she does enjoy life, but she is a greedy little bitch. Well, you want to roll me a knowledge nature? See if you know what's going on at least? You said you've been countering some of these before, so... It is. It, it's night time, so it was dark. You have dark I didn't vision. Have anything. I got a two. Man, what's up with your rolls tonight, dude? I don't know. I guess this thing did jump onto your face, so you can't see it very well. Uh, here. It seems very solidly built, though. Whatever it is, it has like strong jaws, really sharp claws, really strong grip, really thick muscle, really sturdy bones. Whatever's on you feels like a really heartily built, mon you know, creature. Even though it's not very big. Probably the size of a small dog. I don't really have anything I can do, so I mean, I guess I'll try and attack it again. All right. I don't really have anything else I can do. I mean, if if I do drop my gold and the way the things rolls have been going, it's gonna chase after me and eat me, kill me. I mean, that's my best roll of the night. Yeah. Was. <laughs> so I got a nineteen on. Take a knowledge. Fucking local. So you will know from your HBI training that the area you're in now is near the Durgar caves where they do a lot of mining. You're very near Durg. Creatures like these often patrol the areas around Durg and are employed by those dwarves to protect this area. Well, I'm happy I know that as this thing is still wrapped on my face. So I'm just going to stab at it, why not? Alright, roll it. Uh, swing my great axe Rubagog. At your face? I'll surge. Uh, well, so that is going to be a 13 plus 11, so 24. That's a hit. That's definitely a hit. So you swing this axe at your face and you do not miss the thing on your face. That's <laughs> a 14. 14 spine damage. I'm gonna roll a percentage chance to see if that stuns this thing around, because that was to the spine, and that's a pretty sensitive area. I rolled a 61, so we'll say, uh, I'll give you three rounds uh, of this thing. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna let it not attack, but I'm gonna give it a minus on its attack for three rounds, because it's like, it's got a knife, it's got an axe in its back. Got yeah, it's still gonna be a hit. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Can you just say that instead of him, like, I'll roll a percentage chance to see if it goes through this thing and into your face. How about that? I think that's a much better way. Well, a much better way for Tika to go out and stabbing herself in the face. 92%. So I'm going to say, yeah, Ortiga stabs through this thing into her own skull. But you're going to be unconscious in these mountains. I need to roll a constitution save to not die. Yeah, she's dead. <laughs> Alright. Uh, Ortega dies in the mountains of West Linya. Try not to die, and tune in next time for more Long Distance Dungeons & Dragons Dinner Theater. Dungeons.